I don't collect Funko Pops. I don't collect Funko Pops. I don't collect Funko Pops. Y'all gotta save me before I start collecting Funko Pops. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, your clubhouse at the intersection of comic history and action figures. Look, I got a lot of issues, but thus far, one of them hasn't been Funko Pops. I've managed to keep those cute little things on the fringes of my collection. Funko was founded in 1998 by Mike Becker, a toy collector who just wanted a coin bank of the big boy. Unable to find one, he got the rights and made his own. Unfortunately, it seems like he was the only one who wanted one, and they failed to sell. But despite filing for bankruptcy, they stayed in business, and their line of Austin Powers wacky wobblers took off, selling 80,000 units. Yeah, baby, yeah! But Funko really exploded in 2005, when Brian Mariotti bought the company and rapidly expanded their licenses, culminating in 2011 with the Pop line. Since then, Funko has released over 20,000 unique products. Collect them all indeed. And there's the rub. I'm a completionist, and that is simply not possible with Funko Pops. But if you ever watch TV on something that looked like this, you simply can't stay away from these things. And hey, I'm no different. I've picked up the occasional pop, usually one that's an inside joke between me and my wife, like this Smurf here. Ow! Ouch! It bit me! <laughs> but outside of a small selection of Spideys, I have remained immune to the bite of the Pops. And then, one day, I walk into my local comic store, and sitting on the new arrivals table were these. It was like Jack Kirby had vomited his genius all over the place. I couldn't resist. But having no place to display them, they went into storage. And they stayed there for two years. Then a buddy of mine gave me a gift certificate to the other comic shop in town. Listen, comic shop loyalty is a big deal. But 25 bucks is 25 bucks. That's when I discovered this. 10 inches of world-devouring glory. With that gift certificate burning a hole in my pocket, I never stood a chance. So get ready for some cuteness. Here come the FF Pops. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. These things are stupid cute. Susie comes with these little ball effects to simulate her invisible girl powers. Reed has that little tuft of gray hair, as well as his elongated arms. And the torch not only comes in his flame-off version with that 60 swoop of blonde hair, but his powered-up version maintains those classic black lines that Kirby and later John Byrne drew to perfection. And of course, the ever-loving thing maintains his rocky exterior while still capturing that inner heart of gold. If all we got were the FF Prime, that would have been more than enough. But Funko threw in everybody's favorite, occasionally demonic robot, Herbie. You know the one. He replaced the Human Torch on the 1980s cartoon. But the brilliance of Kirby was often seen in his villains, and Funko hooked us up there too. Appearing in the very first issue of the Fantastic Four is the Maleficent Mole Man. The Skrulls are about to explode in the MCU, but the Super Skrull here had the ability to mimic all of the FF's powers. And of course, Victor Von Doom, Reed Richards' arch nemesis, and the most compelling villain in the entire Marvel Universe. Heroes and villains are easy to define, but what about those with more complex motivations, like the noble Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer, who first came to Earth bent on its destruction? Funko hooked us up with his exquisite regular Silver Surfer, and a teeny tiny one that came with Galactus, the Devourer of Worlds. More a force of nature than a true villain, when he came to your planet, you either defeated him or were destroyed. We did get a regular sized Galactus with the original wave of figures, but it was this oversized bobblehead that has me wavering on my anti-pop stance. I have always loved Spider-Man the best, 
but there is just something about these FF Pops that speaks to me. It has to be the magical way Funko has been able to create a simple design that is equal parts cuteness and nostalgia. Combine that with the energetic, hopeful 1960s charm of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee's creations, and you have a recipe for success. So what do y'all think? Should I go all in on Pops? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun from Carbon Scoring.